Okay, yeah, right here. In the program just des program description, I mentioned that we we'd be showing up on site like every quarter. So we do want to keep to that where um, the fellows, the full fellows in training, like basically like when you're uh, doing your stuff, I mean, we're generating money. Part of that money goes to travel funds that we can travel back here for. And first of all, there's the next semester of immersion in the spring, which is going to be April, May, but probably at like a three point three month mark or so, we should come here either to do some build out or training or other stuff. And I, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to look, but yeah, we definitely want to do that. Did you have any comments on, on what the what tools we can use or how, how this could look so that we do create a very supportive network? Any thoughts on that? Um, hmm. I could think about a little more. I yeah. haven't gotten to the solution side of my concern yet. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking definitely like maybe so we might want to set up a social media page exclusively immersion program people. So <laughs> oh, yeah, we have like a really cool something that sticks like we want to make sure set something up that it sticks right now we communicate a lot on the lc workshops facebook page we might want to set up set one up for for the osc elite <laughs> no, for, for the people who are really getting the deep dive to all this stuff that, which is uh which i i'm hoping that would be like a really good source of inspiration and energy for everybody participating you know that you know that that venue should be on fire you know so that should be good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just thought of this that I, I'm thinking you through um, another aspect of this uh, meeting or OC collaborator. Mm -hmm. I don't have any, like, I figure out the financial part of it, like how to pay the bills as well as how to continue working in uh, OC projects. So then how and where do I settle this and completely shifting my base from the US to India. So those parts I and that actually worries me a lot that I, I have figured out what I'm gonna do and where I'm gonna do it. the financial aspects of it. So that is going to I think it will it will fall in place as I go through. I'm just talking I'm just talking about difficulties that yeah, no, that's that's that is a good point that you know we will have a great solution. We don't immediately have a great solution, but we can work on it. But I think the one thing we can do is immediately is that, I mean, do you have contacts back, back in India that are good, good family and friends or? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, it might be, so during the immersion program itself, we're going to do some work on creating, establishing relationships and actually organizing the event for the future. But it might be worthwhile that we can work actually on that so we can say, okay, we're going to coordinate on an event that we can post on our website. We can basically start organizing right further. We probably, I was thinking, you know, first week we're saying, okay, let's put some events on the calendar, you know, and and start organizing for them, getting the word out there and, and getting people who are interested to jump on board. And that should be kind of functionality we want to put into our website. So what I was thinking is uh, we have a page where the world map, you can basically like request a workshop. So you can put your mark on map wherever in the world and when there's enough mm -hmm. people on the map you say okay we're gonna go there and we're actually gonna do it uh, so that would be one thing to do but there's, there's many things we can do regarding you know, such marketing activity and how to strategize to, to make the events happen in different places because and as I said we can't we could offer you the fellowship for India is because we have no idea what it looks like but I mean, maybe you get some initial experience you know we might open it up to India next year or something if we get positive feedback from there. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Sorry, so what did you say? I missed that. I said she's a trailblazer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going right. where no one has gone before. That's right. I think the toys we all are. Yeah. Especially on yeah. Alright, I love it. I love it. My pleasure. So, okay. So the second question is going to be just, you know, just, um, I'd like to, yeah, we'll have like 15 minutes. Uh, we'll, let's take off at two, but I want to ask you the next question, which is, um, so what can you offer to the, I mean, these challenges or, or just the progress in general, what are you offering to the group? What can you teach? So I, I'll start with myself. Well, first of all, I can teach all the technical knowledge I have, including, uh, I think my strong point. So 
let's talk about strong points and what you can teach. I think my strong point is the integrative viewpoint. I r totally believe in being an integrated human who, who uh, is a boundary crosser in a major, major way because I found that the more you know about disparate topics, the better you can learn about any new things that you take on and you're just more more well-rounded. So my offer to the group as far as the strong point, I, I think I can teach you while reading the, the technology. Like, I don't feel like, I would say, yeah, my strong would be that I don't feel there are any barriers to people who can learn. I do not believe genius is born, is absolutely hard work and vacation and time. And I believe that anyone <laughs> else who says otherwise is BSing or really specialized into a very narrow focus. So there is no magic to excellence. It's hard work, but I believe everyone has because I think of myself, I feel like I've been pretty uh, normal until about five. At 25, I started to meditate and I turned on to a different level of, of perception of, of how I view the world which has helped me to, I think, become exceptional at this point. I can really pursue different paths since then, make me do things that very few people are doing, if any. So uh, I will encourage you to believe that because I believe that anything is possible and it's, and it's our mind that our, our, our view of the world that affects what is possible within our consciousness not. So I'll be encouraging you all to be jumping out of your comfort zones and out of your your present thought patterns to to just uh, infinite possibilities. Um, and then on a very practical level, I will also do, actually during the workshop I will be making a lot of contacts out in terms of because we we do have a, we do know a lot of people and we do have good social networks. Um, decently connected to a lot of different people in different areas. So I'll be working on organizing the events. So as I said, we will collaborate on it, but I'll be doing that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the schedule, but I'll definitely be doing that intensely during the actual immersion program. So I'll be teaching a lot and then doing some of the organizing for to line up more events for the future. That's my offer. Um, Bati, what, what do you think is your strong point? What do you offer to team to make us succeed? I'm so scared of this question. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, because I'm been I've been working on the insurance business on the society for so long, and I don't know if that is going to work for me. It's just so scared of it. Yeah, well, enterprise <sighs> development is huge in what we do, so I don't know if that skill set could be handy. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I know. Documentation and uh, testing, uh, software testing. And, there's yeah. plenty of software that we have on our map too. Like, there's improvements we can make on a three printer software. Like, there's uh, so basically there's a w very wide skill set that's required to make this civilization start kit happen. So we'll see, okay. we'll see what that is. Maybe maybe some software things or business things. Okay. Matt, what do you think is your strong point and how can you help us succeed? Um, well, I've got background in manufacturing and fabrication, so as far as assembling things and stuff like that, I can help people get through some of the, you know, initiation of, of that. You know, that's, that's one of the big things is just getting initiated to doing something new is like the biggest hurdle to overcome for people. And I've, mm -hmm. I've done quite a bit of work with my hands, so I can help people get through some of the first hurdles there. Um, I went to school for electronics, like I said, so helping with wiring stuff up and everything, you know, Sarah said she wanted to get her hands on. I can help from that end, but then my weak point is the software. I've, I've done a whole lot of coding, so she can help me with that. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah so, so the assembly, the, the, yeah. Yeah. So, so Matt's a, he's a pro level welder actually. So he can do like, he told me, do like with a three pen. He can do that with a TIG welder. With a welder, he can do like three shapes in thin air, which is relevant for 3D printing adventures with metal, but 
Yeah, so that Matt probably can maybe demonstrate for us during the, the program. You're going to be able to bring your if we have time. Yeah, I'll bring it down. Yeah, yeah. No, he showed me this stick, this this three dimensional shape that he just did by hand with the welders going into the third dimension. It was like, wow, that is very cool. Uh, that's kind of the kind of stuff that like robotic welders do, and they can pull up a, a shape into 3D by uh, just welding. And they they go into the third dimension, so it's not fat, but it goes in space. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, tell us what your strip point is and how can you help us? So, um, yeah, as I shared, I have a background in software development, so I know a few things about that. Um, I, but I think that, um, like the experience I have, the, the three and a half years I lived in an eco village, I, I see that I have, um, like a shareable experience there, like, you know, firsthand knowledge of an alternative system that is functioning. Um, and so all of the social, spiritual, logistical, industrial systems, um, that, that I have firsthand experience of, like, um, are an asset for me, like, um, understanding how OSC mission can take on a more, um, holistic lifestyle in the world. Um, I also think that I, um, can be a good cheerleader because mm -hmm. you're all superheroes to me. I'm so excited <laughs> that. So, I can get ready Pretty enthusiastic and over the top, but um, I got in a team environment. Of, I I'm just like not trying to like do my own horn here, but but um, I really enjoy like helping others see. And um, like Bhakti, I think that you have a confident like a like a bridge that you didn't even list as one of your strengths. And, but I think that you really have that because even to like be here and take this on and say, I'm going to take this to India, um, I think that you have a courage and a confidence that is really remarkable there. So, um, I'm excited to just help, help everyone like be a mirror to, to what you all have because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why you're awesome. Oh, wow. Cool. And then, uh, uh, excellent stuff. So in the entry survey, the entrance survey that I asked you to fill out, I actually asked the question, which is, or just a point, I made a point, you know, we are all there to help support each other and do a deep immersion learning environment. And part of it is keeping us to our code of honor or values like ethics, open source, integrity, and all that. So with that said, uh, Sarah, since you, you mentioned that you'll be a good cheerleader. Also be a good cheerleader if if you got to call a foul play, you know, uh, basically help us grow. To I want to I want to create this within the program create an environment where we're very open to, to uh, be vulnerable or uh, just open to learning. I think openness to learning is one of the biggest, biggest value we can ever have. And we should keep each other accountable to that, to that type of learning. And if we're, you know, if we need help, give us give us encouragement. If we're being like weak, supportively point out, help us grow. I mean, um, I think we have a chance at the rules for us here. I have to set up a an environment where we are able to learn and grow in, in just incredible ways. Where you all are, we all keeping each other accountable to being the best people we can be, to growing, to be open and tech, to be integral. Uh, ethical, ethical ethics here are not for sale. So, um, but it's I want all of us to keep that. That's part of a brand. I mean, open source ecology is about creating the ethical economy. That's a powerful statement, and I think all of us have a role in that. So, I want us to be a a, a force that's reckoned for that for that value that. We're still, you know, we, we don't pick any enemies. We don't, you know, we don't believe there's, it's us and them. We're all in it together. And we're setting an example, a point of light. So 
that's I want to emphasize that that we should all take that leadership um, f uh, with the organization. Yep. So, yeah. I don't know what to say yet uh, at this point. Um, I think that's a good introduction to all of us. Uh, too bad other there's a bunch of people that are missing right now, but I think we'll uh, they can at least review this. And maybe maybe we'll force them to say, "Hey, uh, hey guys, guys who missed it, why don't you just, uh, read yourself with a video answering all the questions that we did first review this?" I think our people should review this. I'll post this up on the internet. Um, does anyone mind if we post this on the internet? I think this is good to share. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. So we can, I mean, part of it is working open, like I mentioned, working only is a big value for us because we show the inner workings and that therefore we inspire people to learn from us and from both the successes and values. I think the open publishing allows people to get engaged. I, I'm doing that. That's, uh, we should all become comfortable doing that because this is good and we believe in it. And we'll ask our other fellows in training and also collaborators in training to answer questions for us as they're assigned. I think with that, I think we can, unless anyone else, um, any other closing comments or questions? So beyond this, I mean, we're meeting the game day is the 24th. The evening will probably is going to happen is we're going to pick you up in a van, the white van that we have. Um, just got to get it licensed again. It's been out of commission, but I think that's that shouldn't be a problem. Um, Otherwise, uh, it's close to game day on a, people arriving the 24th in the evening and 25th the morning, people starting. So any questions on any other logistics or anything like that or anything else? We want uh, to are there any tools, we, any tools we need to bring for this or? I mean, it's useful to have um, more tools like, like a cordless drill and other little things. I mean, tools won't hurt, uh, they're definitely desirable. Especially, you got favorite tools that you know you really like to use. So I never say no to tools. And yeah, yeah that's good. Basically, just small hand tools I take it because we're assembling 3D printers and stuff. Yeah, like things like you've got uh, M5. <laughs> we use M5 hex um, Allen head. We, we do little cuffs of those and put them in a cordless drill so it has to assemble those together. There's basically like the one screw to minimize part count, but that's the main one we use there. Yeah, small hand tools, but I mean, we'll have everything here, so, uh, but definitely tools don't hurt. Additional tools don't hurt. Uh, bring, guys, bring cameras. Do you have old cell phones that we can turn in just time lapse photography stations? Uh, with open open camera or what is it open photo open camera I think what I sent you in the email uh, uh, you want to capture a lot of them um, do one better yeah I've got a few uh, VR record it's set up uh, several cameras around the workshop if you want oh yeah 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 um, yeah, do you have means to get that off? Uh, how many hours do they last? Do you have uh, that kind of infrastructure? Because we we're talking about leaving these plugged in, like so bring a power cord so that the cell phone can be running like 12 hours, you know, capture or six hours, capture well, the, the whole. The, these, these are actual security cameras. They're the dome things you see in the parking lots. Okay. All right. They, they plug into tilt wall. zoom abilities. They aim them and yep, oh. mount them to a wall or whatever. Do you plug those in, or so, do, are they uh, bring a few wireless? Down. They plugged in. They have, okay. I have the power slides on and everything. Do they have like, SD cards, or how do you get them? Fall off? I have a DVR. I have a DVR recorder. It goes with them, so all the essential recorder and it stored. Can you export that? It sounds like a lot of memory. Uh, is it exportable in decent size format, like just AD? Mm -hmm. 
size than yeah. it should be. We don't want to be overwhelmed oh. with too many gigabytes. It's impossible to handle. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it would be a record. There's okay. also time ups. Just I'll bring a couple down, down and then record. Yeah. No, it's great. That's there great. are set there are settings for that. Yeah. That'll be good. It might be that's acceptable. What I do with open open camera is I set it at ten second intervals and then you can catch like a whole day in like five minutes. And that's pretty useful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Open camera. Yeah, it's in an email I sent to everybody, logistics email. Dr. Yeah, I was thinking uh, similar to open camera, you can also can you record the sessions and make it open? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like if yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean there's actually some people that are registered to participate uh, remotely, meaning that we're rec we're actually going to stream like whatever presentations I'm doing. I'll be streaming mm -hmm. that on Jitsi, just like we're doing now to a live audience. There's three oh, people signed okay. up so far, but I want to record mm -hmm. that. It wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't hurt to have backups, so that in case something crashes or something, we we have good, or like even I was thinking of putting a using my cell phone for the sound in case because that's actually much better. So I was going to use a mic, record the voice independently, and combine it with a video after. Especially if the if the recording crashes or something like that. But yeah, no, our, mm -hmm. we, that would be good. That would be good. Definitely want to open it up and, and share that. Mm -hmm. Even the leak we also can go back and get to do something. We might forget to do Absolutely, of course. Yeah. And uh, ideally, it would be that, yeah, we post them. We could even annotate them like a minute five. We, we discuss this. So like basically like transcript. Uh, if we have time to do that, but yeah, we we are focusing a lot on documentation. The last thing I want to point out is we'll use a lot of the Google Docs where all of us are actually like when I'm doing a lecture, like all of you to be scribes. So you're learning, you're writing it down, you you're all note takers. So I'll be blasting through a lot of material. I'll be going to all kinds of different websites. But we what we can do is experiment with the concept of how that works. For multiple note takers to do like really good notes during all these lectures. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time to, you know, to edit, to... If I had to prepare that, it would take... I mean, just don't have the time. So ideally, since I have a lot of this and a lot of websites I can point to, and like I kind of know a lot of the wiki, what's on there, um, if, if we can develop this, this technique, which we can also use in design jams, where people are designing things in multiple locations around the country, or around the world in real time. So when we do our design jams, these public design sessions, we can collaborate on documents. So, so it's important that all of us learn to do that effectively so we can lead others in doing that as well. But yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of good notes. And, and Google Docs work really well. I mean, they're the best tool. Uh, sometime the open source version of Google Docs will come about, but nothing compares to Google Docs in terms of uh, the Google presentations. They're, they're fast and so forth. The other ones we tried that were open source, they were just lagging was really impractical to work with both images and text at the same time. Uh, it's critical that we have both images and text as we document and, and um, develop all the stuff that we do. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, we've got our assignment set up for people that missed the meeting. Uh, we'll, we'll see you all very soon, less than a week. So great to meet you all for the first time, uh, for the team meeting each other, and let's be friends with each other and, and do some major good world work. So we'll see you soon.